today I have a story for you called What If You Had An Animal Nose? And this story is non-fiction, which means it's going to teach you some facts as we are reading it. It's not necessarily written like a story with a beginning, middle, and end. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that on most of the pages, there's going to be a title at the top. There's going to be some information here, a fact here, and a little blurb over here. And so I'm going to read it all. Now the book is going to be a little bit long, so if it gets too long for you, just press pause and come back to me in a little bit. So let's read our story. What If You Had an Animal Nose by Sandra Markle, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. What if one day when you woke up and looked in the mirror, the nose on your face wasn't yours? What if overnight a wild animal's nose took its place? What if? All right, our first animal we're going to learn about is a taper. A taper is a plant-eating animal with a very handy nose. Its nose moves and bends to grab leaves off of a branch or push fruit into the taper's mouth. A taper's nose is joined with its upper lip. It bends and moves so well because it is made of muscle. Once a nose is that big and movable, it's called a proboscis. Fact. Tapers mainly eat at night, so they bend their noses in all directions to sniff out food in the dark. If you had a taper snout, you could catch a home run ball, even with your hands full. A cottontail rabbit. They have a very different nose. A rabbit's nose is packed with smell sensors, and rabbit noses twitch for many different reasons. A rabbit wiggles its nose up and down to pull more air in when it sniffs. Can you do that? Maybe. That helps it find food or tell when hungry hunters are close so it can hop away to safety. A rabbit's nose twitches faster when it's interested or excited, sometimes as many as 120 times a minute. Kind of like a dog's tail, I guess, going back and forth. Fact. Rabbits have long, super sensitive whiskers on either side of their nose. These whiskers help rabbits feel if a space is big enough to be squeezed through, even in the dark. If you had a rabbit's nose, your twitching nose would show your school spirit. Oh, look. She gets excited, her nose will twitch. Elephant. An elephant's nose may be the most useful nose on the planet. It's so long and special it even has its own name, a trunk. An elephant's trunk can sniff smells from lots of directions, even from up high. It can lift and carry something as heavy as a big log. An elephant also uses its trunk to pull in water, as much as two gallons at a time. Then it sprays a drink in its mouth or gives itself a shower. Fact. The tip of an elephant's trunk works like fingers. It can pick up something as little as a peanut and pop it into its mouth. If you had an elephant's trunk, you wouldn't need to go to a water park in the summer. A grizzly bear. A grizzly bear's nose is packed with smell sensors. No wonder this bear is a champ at tracking down food, sometimes from over a mile away. It needs to find and eat all the food it can before winter. That's when grizzly bears go into a deep sleep called hibernation and usually doesn't eat at all. 
The smell sensing areas in a grizzly bear's nose are a hundred times bigger than a human's. Look at that nose. If you had a grizzly bear's nose, you could sniff out all your favorite goodies and only trick or treat at the best houses. A warthog. You might have seen a warthog if you saw the movie The Lion King. A warthog's nose isn't pretty, but it's the perfect food finder. First, the warthog uses its strong sense of smell to sniff out the underground roots and bulbs that it likes to eat. Then the warthog rolls its nose around to dig into soft soil with some help from its tusks. Finally, the warthog uses its nose to lift dirt out of the hole until it finds the roots or bulbs to munch. Fact, warthogs greet each other with nose to nose bumps. Look at them, they're saying hello. If you had a warthog's nose, you would never need anything but your nose to build sand castles. I hope that sand doesn't get in my nose. A saiga. A saiga is a sheep-sized antelope with a proboscis nose. Its proboscis is lined with hairs and snotty mucus, making it perfect for filtering out dust. That's important because the saiga's homeland is often dry and dusty. Herds of saigas live together and kick up a lot of dust traveling in search of grass to eat. Fact. Some saigas live in parts of Russia where winters are very cold. The saiga's big nose heats up icy air as the saiga breathes in. If you had a saiga's nose, you would never notice when a room was dusty. Star-nosed mole. Now that I have not seen before. A star-nosed mole is a small burrowing animal that uses its nose to find dinner in the dark underground and sometimes even underwater. The star-nosed mole uses its nose to smell, but it also uses it to feel for food. Its nose has 22 fleshy rays around the nostrils. These are always moving. And quick as a blink, the mole knows if its nose touches food, like a worm or an insect. Fact. To smell underwater, the star-nosed mole blows bubbles and then sniffs, pulling the air bubbles into its nose past its smell sensors. If you had a star-nosed mole, a star-nosed mole's nose, you could find a midnight snack without turning on the kitchen light. Rhinoceros. That's a nose we probably recognize. A rhinoceros is the only animal with a horn on its nose. It's made up of layers of keratin, the same stuff that human hair and fingernails are made of. Male rhinos use their horns to duel for mates. Females use theirs to guard their babies. Besides having a horn, a rhino's nose has a keen sense of smell to find leaves and fruit to eat. They can also sniff for enemies like lions. Fact. A baby rhinoceros isn't born with a horn, but one soon starts growing and it never stops. Oh my, it never stops. If you had a rhinoceros's nose, you'd be the perfect bodyguard. People will surely stay away from that, wouldn't they? Giant Anteater. 
What looks like a giant anteater's long nose is really its upper and lower jaws joined together. Its nose is on the tip of this long tube. This nose is perfect for poking into the hard to reach places to sniff out yummy insects like ants and termites. A giant anteater also uses its long nose like a snorkel when it goes swimming so it can breathe while underwater. Fact. When it smells insects, the giant anteater flicks its super long tongue in and out quickly, as many as 160 times a minute, and eats bugs by the thousands. Oh, wow. If you had a giant anteater's nose, you could go scuba diving without a snorkel. Look at him swimming. A Burritt's Horseshoe Bat. Ooh. A Burritt's Horseshoe Bat's nose makes it a super nighttime bug hunter. Like other bats, a Burritt's Horseshoe Bat hunts by snorting high-pitched noises out its nose and listening for echoes of anything around them. But most bats shoot sounds in every direction at once. The shape of this bat's nose channels the sound so it can pinpoint exactly where to snag an insect. Fact. To save energy, a bird's horseshoe bat often hangs from a branch while snorting noises. When an echo signals an insect is nearby, the bat flies after it. If you had a Burritt's horseshoe bat's nose, you'd catch every fly that tried to spoil your picnic. <gasps> Look at that, you just catch some flies right there. Hammerhead shark. A hammerhead shark's nose is only for smelling, not breathing. The shark swings its head side to side, forcing water into a nostril near each eye. Because its nostrils are so far apart, the shark can tell if a fishy scent is stronger to the left or right. Then it tracks down its dinner. Fact. A hammerhead shark can smell blood from wounded prey as far as half a mile. If you had a hammerhead shark's nose, you would always know the best places to fish. A wild animal's nose could be cool for a while, but you don't use your nose to spray water or to dig in the ground. You don't need your nose to catch flies or be a snorkel while you swim underwater. And you'll never grab anything with your nose, no matter what. So if you could keep a wild animal nose for more than a day, what kind of nose would be right for you. Hmm, so many choices. Luckily, you don't have to choose. The nose on your face will always be a people nose. It will be what you need to breathe and sniff all the scents around you. It's the perfect place to rest glasses if you need them to see better. But best of all, your nose is just what you need to look just like you. Now, what does your nose do for you? Your nose starts with nostrils, twin openings for air to move in and out. Inside are passages lined with hairs and coated with mucus, or snot. Together, these catch dust, germs, and pollen from plants that could bother your lungs or even make you sick. Then you sneeze or you blow out what your nose catches. Meanwhile, the air you breathe in also becomes warmer and wetter. So this is kind of inside look at what's behind your nose. 
Way up inside your nose is a postage stamp sized patch packed with scent sensors. These send signals to your brain which let you know what you are smelling. At the same time, air travels down your throat to your windpipe and your lungs. So your nose is the main way for you to get the air you need to live as well as to smell that world around you. Now some smells are really good and some are not so good. Your nose needs you. For your nose sake, you need to be careful what you breathe. Stay away from cigarette smoke and try not to breathe in fumes from harsh chemicals. If you live in a place where it gets cold, cover your nose with a scarf to shield it from the chilly air. If you live where the air is very dry, place a humidifier in your home. That will make the air you breathe moister, which helps to prevent nosebleeds and colds. And if your nose feels clogged, blow gently. The end. So boys and girls, I hope you, one, enjoyed that story. And two, I hope you learned a lot. Did you pick out which animal nose that you would want to have? I'll see you next time.